Hello, good evening. It is Wednesday, the 16th of March, 1745, 1945, a quarter to eight. You just check the audio. Hello, good evening. That will ding dang do. I'll share this into a few places. And then we shall begin. <clears throat> Certified person, legal personality, straw man, fiction, name, doing business as, and security instrument. It's a bit of a big one. Get yourself comfortable. Grab a pen, make some notes, <laughs> and enjoy. We shall begin very, very soon after I shall learn. be with you. PLSPro.com, Facebook, then to Telegram. All is well. Why are you? I seem to be on my own at the minute, talking to myself. Hello to those on the replay. I think goes to Indigo Glue, good one. I do like uh, the satire that we have. <laughs> Bear with me. Apologies. I have a massive document to read you. Mahusiv. I believe I've posted that in all the right places. Start video. Ciao. Look at that for a nice, colourful, vibrant, beautiful background. Hello to the six that are in. I shall pull up the live chat, Lisa. Hey, hi there, our uh, intrepid autodidactic David. <laughs> I'm not sure what autodidactic is. I know autodidactic. I'll have to check that out. Gansters, Greg. What, what? Let me see if I can uh, position you somewhere here. I can uh, see the chat as it scrolls down. All right, I've got some nice uh, backgrounds to go through and share with you. But first of all, let me explain a few areas where you can find this if you're new to this, if this video has been shared with you and you're not a regular then um, I shall help you locate this. Let me share screen. Okay, this is uh, my primary channel that um, I cast from Indiglow, I N D I space G L O W. You got an icon there with the uh, a bearded king giving a fist bump. So that's where um, my primary outlet is. Okay, that's. Um, Unfortunately, not going to be active until mid-May, as um, I shared a video from the House of Commons entitled COVID-19 Vaccine Damage Bill Yellow Card Scheme, and um, it's been removed because it violated YouTube community standards. It was an exact copy of um, a, a talk in the House of Commons regarding that title, what I've just said. YouTube removed it and gave me my channel here um, a ban for three months. Uh, this is our private foundation, educational charitable trust. There's our homepage. Okay, so you type in splspro.com. 
and you will find an introduction landing page for you there to have a look at and you may uh, choose to uh, press become a supporter we would like you to become a supporter and help our private community grow there's some introductory videos there for you to look at should you join then you would go to activity and on activity page here is the link for the private telegram group link that we have we also have a public open telegram chat chirp as i call it there and if you uh, are anywhere on our pages at the top, this website is designed by Greg, who's with us now, G-Star, as he's uh, commonly known. You would press the blue F, and that would take you to our public Facebook trust, self-titled again, um, Brother Kelvin, Kelvinius Maximus. Kevin is in there managing that. Uh, and there's uh, all of the uh, activity and... Uh, public Facebook posts and interactions we do there. So um, well done for those that have uh, followed the links and found me here. I shall uh, close Indiglo down. I don't need to see that page. What we're doing now is stop screen sharing and I'll, I'll get the document up to show you or I'll read the document, I'll leave that on. And perhaps I might get a more fitting background and we shall begin. So uh, get yourself comfy, get a pen, a pad, some paper, and um, write down some notes, ask me some questions later on if you've got the uh, stamina, if your saturation point is a big, you can take vast and bulbous uh, information overloads, which I'm about to give you. Um, I think there's 90 pages, 26,000 words of this latest document, and not all of you like to... Um, read some of you struggle with reading i myself do <coughs> bit of a jordan maxwell throat clear there i've got a nice background for us to start off with there we go that one will do so um i know some of you enjoy listening and um, having me on in the background rather than reading through pages reams and reams of um <laughs> text so um, it's entitled Certified Person, Legal Personality, Straw Man, Fiction, Name, DBA, Doing Business as and Security Instrument. So there's a lot here and it's all linked. It was going to be a short document about persons and it goes uh, hand in hand with other documents we've done. This document will be made available <clears throat> and put into a zip file hosted on our uh, private educational domain. It will be put into our Facebook group. It will be put into our Telegram groups. And um, we shall also look at um, putting a bundle together. Just a USB malfunction. No. And... Uh, what happened here? Not what you need. Bear with me. See if I can repair this. So I lose connection, Captain. <laughs> Stop beeping. It's not happy. It looks like it's my keyboard. Okay, we can remedy that. We can remedy that. We have the power. Done. No mouse. Heavens to move, Troy. That's there. No USB there. They're all in use. All right then. All right then, he says. Still on. Ah, fixed. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened there. I think my USB port's gone up here. It's given up the ghost. So yeah, we need to go back to basics and recap um, the person in a nutshell. Let me just say 
what's happening here. That's the background. <laughs> hello, Anders. Merlin's assistant. Hello, hello. Bonjour, mon ami. Ciao, bello. Ciao, bella. Malcolm, hello, brother. Nice to see you at the uh, Equity and Trust Seminar in Wimbledon. Thank you for traveling all that way. And um, create a bless one and all that are in the room. Lisa, autodidactic definition relating to someone learning by themselves rather than being taught by a teacher. Ah, thank you very much. Each one is to teach one. And today you have taught me autodidactic. Lisa and Kevin. I didn't see Kevin there, but uh, okay. Thank you for that. The sound is poor. Oh, don't give me. Let me check. Let me check on here. A bit sketchy, doesn't it? All right, well, uh, we can see what we can do there. My check, my check. All right, then, there's not a lot I can do right now, I'm afraid, initiates, unless I bring it around here. Extend it so it's closer to me. Move the drink. You know, which is my command. There's no point doing an epic video and a proofread if you cannot hear. Man. Let's see if that improves it. Had it all set up perfect or so I thought. This briefly. Let me just check my settings. Let me just restart the microphone. Well, webcam. All right then. I see. Move on. The blue yeti. It's on. Using the webcam mic. Go. That should ding dang do it. Fixed it. <laughs> I didn't need this. I haven't got enough time as it is. I'm up at to five a.m. to the house of the ware. The ware. That should ding dang do it. Right. Thank you for that. I'm glad I noticed that. Easy P. We're on. Let's go. You have been warned. This will be a big one. <clears throat> me, 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 me. Over the years, one of the most frequently asked questions that I am asked is, where do I start first, David? I've been asked that. If I had a pound every time I'd been asked that, I'd be a very rich man. In the first instance, I always reply, to know thyself. This is the key to unlocking Pandora's legal mystery box. It is essential for one to cognize the various jurisdictions that play my initiates of self and law, my autodidactic family. Welcome to the attainment of higher knowledge. Aristotle, the man who made significant contributions to every aspect of human knowledge once said, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom and one would be foolish to disagree. Aristotle's work revolves around the idea that wisdom is practical and not theoretical. Having skin in the game is how we uh, termify that sometimes. He stressed that man is a rational animal and that virtue comes with proper exercise of reason. The relationship you have with yourself is one of the most important relationships you will create throughout your lifetime. Without a fruitful relationship with thyself, how can you expect others to understand or know you? The essence of a happy, fulfilling life begins with a proper understanding of whom you are. 
Besides the empowerment and freedom that comes with self-knowledge, it allows you to be the master of your opinions, thoughts and feelings. I do disagree that authentic man or man is comparable to an animal. We are known as creatures of comfort. You know, um, man is created in the image of the universal creator. We can also reference Anu, Enki and Enlil, the watchmen. True knowledge of the self is the most beautiful and useful accomplishment you will master in this life and will determine your actions and trajectory. Despite this, we often are infatuated with others, neglecting the beauty and individuality of our own minds. The sooner we embark on a journey of pure introspection and self-discovery, consciously examining and acknowledging our faults and weaknesses, the sooner we turn our weaknesses into strengths. Analyzing our thoughts and becoming conscionable in this woke, awake generation, you know, uh, we have to uh, set, this is my um, preface into where we're going and uh, the reasons for where we're going and some little bit of a warm-up uh, historical referencing to, you know, you may have seen the iconic video my brother Santos of the Bonacci family, um, know thyself and heard him mention know thyself. You may have heard Jordan Maxwell mention this uh, terminology. So <clears throat> increasing knowledge of the self requires reflection, distancing, experience, contemplation, and to some extent, suffering, discipline. One must push their mind past perceivable limits by challenging the conventional wisdom debating for the sake of debating and indulging in books regarding the human condition. Here are some of the apostles and authors, initiates that I can recommend in no particular order of importance though. Alan Watt, Neville Goddard, Rudolf Steiner, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Billy Graham, Greg Braden, Santos Bonacci, Jordan Maxwell, Helena Blavatsky, Manly P. Hall, Alistair Crowley, H.P. Lovecraft, and Bruce Lipton are just some of the great souls, past and present, that have helped I formulate my opinions and perspective on this subject of knowing thyself, syncretism, synchronicity, and spiritualism. The journey is indeed a humbling one. What journey? The hero's journey, the uh, the pathway to enlightenment, uh, the attainment of nirvana, no matter what continent, creed and uh, belief system you have, there is a journey from being um, entered into this realm by mum and the waters of mum up until the uh, you know, uh, modern day where you are now. By unearthing your innermost thoughts, one loses the sense of entitlement while realising we uh, is a sticky subject to uh, homo sapiens, humans, humans are but a tiny speck in the universe, the microcosm within the macrocosm. Homo sapiens originates, uh, is found in Latin dictionary. Wise man is what it would translate to into English. The species to which all modern human beings belong. Homo sapiens is one of several species grouped into the genus Homo, but it is the only one that is not extinct. So you can look at human evolution for yourself. The name Homo sapiens was applied in 1758 by the father of modern biological classification. See taxonomy, taxonomy, yeah. Carolus Linnaeus. It had long been known that human beings physically resemble primates more closely than any other known living organisms. But at the time, it was a daring act to classify human beings with the same framework used for the rest of nature. Linnaeus, concerned exclusively with similarities in body structure, faced only the problem of distinguishing Homo sapiens from apes, gorillas, chimpanzees, orangutans and gibbons, which differ from humans in numerous body as well as cognitive features. Charles Darwin's treatise on evolution on the origin of species would come 101 years later. And that is still a theory 
And um, I believe all of the evidences that they've looked at with the genome and chromosomes and uh, the biological comparisons is not as um, accurate and strong as it could initially be. They've gone out on a limb there with that theory of Darwin's. One realizes how little they know about the world and how their accumulated knowledge amounts to nothing. Despite these fears, knowing thyself is the essence of reality and the start of the journey to wisdom. Now, initiates, let us ask the following question. What exactly is a person? Well, we would need to first look at the various dictionaries at hand to determine each language and its implied meaning, definition and interpretations of persons therein. The legal dictionary of the law society, solicitors, lawyers and barristers, attorneys and judges is called Black's Law. This dictionary is used for the Crown Copyright Legalese language, the language of the inner city Templars of the corporate city of London, Londinium and the Crown of London, including the agents of the Crown, the police, for example. There are three crowns, the Papal Crown of the Papacy, the Crown of London and a crown on Elizabeth's head. All policy, statute and legal guidelines of the UK of GB Corporation and the Government of the United Kingdom Corporation are written using the legalese language. Now I take your autodidactic Lisa and I give you antiqua technology. You know what antiquities are, you know what antiques are and you know antiqua tech, antiqua technology a weapon of mass deception as old as the New World Holy Testament, the Bible itself. Personage and barratry are what crime are, is being committed with this maritime might. It is a crime known as personage. What is personage? If you've never heard of that, feel free to look it up and find out your own implied meaning and definition of that word. <clears throat> by arbitrarily creating an estate trust named after you and claiming to own this thing they created. They have falsely claimed to own you and your assets and to literally buy and sell you on the stock exchanges, ship you out of ports and tax you for doing things you've never done. So the uh, law society in itself, um, legal and law, UK legal and English law, um, they are knowingly committing what is known as personage. Let us look at a few words that contain the word port in them. Passports, transportation, export, deportation. It is important to note that there are around 1,000 words used within the Oxford Editions Dictionary with the word port in them. The act of treating a man or woman as a thing, dehumanising corruption, Satanism, any entity asking for or using your first and last names is committing the crime of personage. Government, courts, police, banks, corporations, etc. are the beneficiaries of this scheme. The crime of personage makes you a thing, a corpse, a prisoner of war, a slave to this domestic terrorism. And we can look at and find and search for the definition of personage. OK, a person of rank, note or distinction, especially one distinguished for presence and personal power. Feel free to share this video on other platforms and help me um, promote this backup channel, SPLS Pro. I would like you to, while you're listening and chatting, if you could put this in places, groups, uh, networks, uh, you know, uh, domains that you frequent, if you could, um, any groups anywhere. Um, we're going to be here a while and I do believe that this information that I'm going to present to you in this latest document will be of key importance and uh, it will be a little bit, I've made it, I've constructed it in this first draft um, to have a little bit of a, of, of, of a ride. Um, there will be some humorous points in here as well and um, it isn't finalised yet. So uh, thank you for joining me and thank you for helping me grow this channel especially one distinguished for presence and personal power. <clears throat> Two, a human individual, individual person. Three, a dramatic fictional or historical character, also impersonation. First known use of personage around about the 15th century in the meaning defined at sense one. So sense one was a person of rank, no, or distinction. 
Legalese is a language that looks, sounds, and writes much like the Anglo or English or even Oxford, Cambridge language, but it is in fact legalese, a separate language to English. It is, as I've come to know of it, Roman text. It has separate implied meanings, definitions, and interpretations of the usual common English words that one has become accustomed to commanding, using, and hearing within the babble that is today's Anglo English. English is actually a language associated with Nordic invaders, the Vikings, and the like. Uh, Frisian is all I shall say. The native language in Britain or England used to be French, Francais, and Latin, not English. We find Latin in two main places throughout the annals of history. The prime place is within the Holy Church and the papacy itself in ecclesiastical jurisdictions. We find Latin within legal and moreover the laws and maxims of England. One familiar Latin saying one should have come across within your discoveries may be sui juris in propria persona, and that translates into in one's proper person. Equity acts in personam, on a person, which translates to a person must be present for lawful English equity to act. A Latin term in this regard is, and I apologise for my terrible Latin pronunciations before I even proceed, furthermore, vigilantibus non dormentibus jura subservient, which means equity aids the vigilant and not the indolent. So if one sleeps on his rights, his rights will slip away from him. And you may have heard us mention those that do not uh, reserve and retain their rights or know of their rights at law are viewed as having no rights. A person who has been wronged must act relatively swiftly to preserve their rights. Otherwise, they are guilty of what is known as latches, L-A-C-H-E-S, an untoward delay in litigation with the presumed intent of denying claims. Now, with the precursive background set, we shall now take the word person and cross-reference it within the legal dictionary, Black's Law London within the Oxford Editions Dictionary of England and with an ecclesiastical or even Latin dictionary, you know, which is ties in with the Vatican City. Person is from Latin, persona equals mask from the Latin dictionary I have in my collection, I've shown before, and you can easily find um, Latin dictionaries yourself to, uh, to check this out. In days of old, the actors in the Roman theatre would wear a mask that had been crafted with pursed lips. The aim of this solid painted decorated mask in its pursed lips was that so when the actor, the man, lady, woman wearing the mask spoke, the air from their mouths would be forced through the mask's mouth opening and the pursed lips would allow for the flow of air to flow freely under pressure and the voice became slightly amplified. So the air was pushed through under slight pressure to hit the audience's ears with a full and rich sonar, sonic, sound wave technology, sonics and phonics. We have touched on the phone and the phony Phoenicians and their definitions, definitions um, connected to the Venetians, later Venice. Now let us focus on the phonics and sonics. The mask allowed for the pursings of sonics, P-U-R, or P-E-R-S-O-N-A, persona, personification, personnel, personal, in person, on your person, P-U-R-S-E-O-N, person. Person is not an English word. When we look at the etymological root references and origins of this word, we see, as I've mentioned, that person originated from the Latin persona, now, if you want to check all the information I am giving you so far, please do so. Do not take my word for it. Furthermore, the disclaimer is that I'm not giving legal advice. So this is not to be misconstrued as uh, legal advice. OK, so uh, um, as per all our disclaimers, you know, uh, any man or woman who chooses to utilize our documents, notices, watch these videos, have the sole responsibility to king stand, inner stand and understand or stand underneath every and each and every word used in our documents, notices, and on these live streams and shows. Um, these 
shows or documents and notices have been created, made for educational and entertainment purposes only. They are, they are in no way deemed or to be interpreted as legal advice. In fact, all construction, presumption or assumption of legal advice purported to be given by myself, David, my channels and splspro.com is hereby expressed as frivolous and is revoked and denied. The intended outcome for all my shows, for all our interactions, as I've shown you in the places where you can find us, and uh, for all our documents and notices, are always to give the desired result of honour and somewhat safety. You will be successful or unsuccessful based on your mental state of consciousness and due to your levels of faith, and seldom is winning and remaining in honour solely on the contents of yours or our notices and documents and instruments. We need to control our fear and remember not all battles are going to be won and you would need to choose wisely. Okay, so now uh, I will continue on. In the Bible, the Lord God Most High is said to have said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Now that is a very interesting alleged statement from the Lord. Now, why? Well, when I have been researching codes and codex, written language, hieroglyphs, cuneiform, Sanskrit, pictographs, etc., we can note that within the Greek alphabet, alpha beta, alphabet, the first letter of the Greek alphabet is indeed alpha, and the last letter of the Greek alphabet is omega. Words and sentences properly, or should I say cleverly constructed, create spells, especially when they are broad cast on a mainstream narrative. One may even care to spell words out aloud, which is known as spelling. Now we go into definitions of persons from dictionary.com, persona, and you can see synonyms for persona on thesaurus.com, noun, plural, persona. A person, personnel, the characters in a play, novel, etc., the narrator of or a character in a literary work, sometimes identified with the author. In the psychology of C.G. Jung, the mask or facade presented to satisfy the demands of the situation or the environment and not representing the inner personality of the individual, the public personality contrasted with anima. A person's perceived or evident personality as that of a well-known official actor or celebrity, personal image, public role. And Black's Law Dictionary, Propria Persona. And that's Henry Campbell Black, uh, 9M.A, 1990. Propria Persona, C Pro Per, category, representing yourself in court. Category, small claims, courts and lawsuits. Category, working with a lawyer. Nollows, plain English, law dictionary. Gerard N. Hill, Kathleen Thompson Hill, 2009, law dictionary. Propria persona, see in propria persona, Ballantyne's law dictionary. In propria persona, adjective Latin, in one's own proper, in one's own person, without the assistance of an attorney, pro se. The defendant appeared in propria persona, Miriam Webster's Dictionary of Law, 1996, Law Dictionary. In propria persona, in one's own proper person. It was formerly a rule in pleading that pleas to the jurisdiction of the court must be plead in propria persona, because if pleaded by an attorney, they admit the jurisdiction. And that was a reference from Black's Law Dictionary again. In propria persona, in one's own person or right, English word dictionary. In propria persona, adjective, in his or own person. The etymology, again, uh, you know, uh, in propria persona, see uh, English dictionary. In propria persona, adverb, etymology, medieval Latin date, 1654, in one's own person or character personally especially without the assistance of an attorney new collegiate dictionary so you can go and find i'm not going to carry on with all of this but uh, yeah um, impropria persona sui juris meaning or sui juris sui juris means loosely the capacity to manage one's own affairs as opposed to 
alieni juris, which indicates the person is under the control of another, such as a legal guardian. In propria persona means in his or her own person. What does suri juris mean? Suri juris is a Latin term meaning in one's own right. More specifically, in order to be considered suri juris, one must have full legal rights and must not be under the power or guardianship of another person. What does sui generis mean in law? Sui generis is a Latin expression that translates to of its own kind. It refers to anything that is peculiar to itself, of its own kind or class. In legal context, sui generis denotes an independent legal classification. What is propria persona in court? Adjective from Latin for oneself, acting on one's own behalf, generally used to identify a person who is acting as his or her own attorney in a lawsuit. What is non sui juris? Latin, not his own master, a term applied to an individual who lacks the legal capacity to act on his or her own behalf, such as an infant or an insane person. What does prima facie mean? Overview, prima facie may be used as an adjective meaning sufficient to establish a fact or raise a presumption unless disproved or rebutted. An example of this would be to use the term prima facie evidence. A prima facie case is the establishment of a legally required rebuttal presumption. What is a persona in law? This is a legal term that refers to the fact that in addition to natural persons, companies are also considered by law to be persons independent of their owners or managers. So what is a persona in law? A legal term that refers to the fact in addition to natural persons. Well, we've got an oxymoron there, haven't we? How can we have a natural persons? For with God, there is no respect of persons. Man, God made man. Man made government, government made persons. So you see my problem there when they, the legal society reference uh, natural persons. Companies are also considered by law to be persons independent of their owners or managers. What is a propria persona hearing? If someone is in propria persona, also known as pro per, it means they are representing themselves in court without the assistance of legal counsel. Propria persona is Latin for oneself. What does propria mean? In one's own personal character, personally, especially without the assistance of an attorney. What does the root suri mean? S-U-I. Suri is a Latin word or prefix meaning self. And sidium was a word for death or killing. Which is what or which is a suri generous right? The Surrey Generous Right prohibits the extraction or reutilization of any database in which there has been a substantial investment in obtaining, verifying, or presenting the data contents. Thus, there is no requirement for creativity or originality. Let me skip through. We don't need that. Persona, 1917, outward or social personality, a Jungian psychology term from Latin persona, person see used earlier 1909 by ezra pound in the set in the sense literary character representing voice of the author persona grata is late latin literally an acceptable person originally applied to diplomatic representatives acceptable to the governments to which they were sent hence also persona non grata plural person non grata person 1200 per sound an individual a human being from old french person human being anyone person 12th century modern french person p-e-r-s-o-n-n-e and directly from latin persona human being person personage a part in a drama assumed character originally a mask a false face such as those of wood or clay covering the whole head worn by the actors in later roman theater oed oxford editions dictionary uh, offers the general 19th century explanation of persona as related to latin personae 
to sound through, i.e. the mask as something spoken through and perhaps amplifying the voice. But the long go makes a difficulty. Klein and Barnhart say it is possibly borrowed from Etruscan Ferrisu mask. Divan has no entry for it. From mid-13th century, as one of the persons of the Trinity, a theological use in church Latin of the classical word, meanings one's physical being, the living body, external appearance, are from late 14th century in grammar. One of the relations which a subject may have to a verb from 15th, 10th, uh, in legal use, corporate body or corporation other than the state and having rights and duties before the law. The use of, of person to replace man in compounds for the sake of gender neutrality or to avoid allegations of sexism is recorded in 1971. In chairperson, in person, imagine a person as a chair, a chair, a person made of a chair in person by bodily presence is from 1560s person to person is attested by 1919 originally of telephone calls oxford editions dictionary persona noun formal the aspects of a person's character that they show to other people especially when their real character is different his public persona is quite different from the family man described in the book it is the work that is important not the persona of the artist. We've got a Cambridge dictionary reference there, the particular type of character that a person seems to have and that is often different from their real or private character. He had a shy retiring side to his personality that was completely at odds with his public persona. Now I'm going to go on to maxims of law. Sua cuic est tutism. Refugium, every man's house is his castle. Nemo di bon domo sua extrae di better. A citizen cannot be taken by force from his house to be conducted before a judge or to prison. This maxim in favour of Roman liberty is much the same as that every man's house is his castle. Let me just um, get the screen share back up for you. One moment. And um, I'll let you look at this document as well, if it will screen share it for me. <coughs> and you can see it for yourself, what I'm reading. Yeah, okay. Nemo di domo sua extra he potest. No one can be dragged, taken by force from his own house. Capitus. Diminutio minima, the lowest or least comprehensive degree of loss of status. This occurred when a man's family relations alone were changed. It happened upon the arrogation of a person who had been his own master, suri, suri juris, or upon the emancipation of one who had been under the patria potestas. It left the rights of liberty and citizenship unaltered. And there's some references there for you to uh, have a look at. This is my document that I'm actually reading from, but um, I just wanted you to see that. I wanted to screen share that with you. Let me just... Um, do that. <laughs> What? <laughs> Recognize that place, do you? I think so. Maritime or Mary time, M A R E, is Mary, maritime. We talk about admiralty and maritime law, but we have also M A R Y, and we could look at it as Mary time, M, -M A R I, Mary, Mary. You know, there seems to be a rank within the society and there is a rank of societies. There are two separate political standings. These are two separate political standings, such as two different ships on one sea. 
The maritime codes or law is the governance of the ships, vessels upon the sea. Admiralty, the admiralty law seems to govern the terms and conditions, also known as statute law on the ships and vessels. Now we can look at corporations as seemingly as fictitious vessels and ships that are governed by the law of the sea. And we remember that names are for companies and corporations. If you note, all company names are in what grammatical style? All corpses, corporations and companies are denoted by the use of all capital letters. <clears throat> and also on the gravestone, a name of a deceased man, a.k.a. person, is denoted by all capital letters. Their final act in this realm was to die in the public, exit the realm in a public status, and therefore it is denoted as um, still as all capital letters. Legal persons are the objects and things that are incorporated, incorporated uh, corporations, and they are subjects to the title of sinner, trustee, debtor society. These have volunteered and declared themselves as subjects. Subjects of what? Subjects of Her Majesty, subjects of the Queen, Queen loyal subjects, um, subject access request. When we do a data subject access request or a subject access request to companies, you see this word subject is used within that for the subject access request. You, your person is that subject. These have volunteered and declared themselves subjects via tacit acquiescence and their own free will that the law society call ignorance of the law. Well, to know about it, we would need to be ignorant of it. We would need to have the opportunity to have learnt about it or to have the material facts of the matter presented to us or to have knowingly entered into these agreements, constructed agreements and then made a decision of on no time in my life do I remember anybody giving me options for um, from 18 onwards and saying actually or even 16 at the uh, 15 with the careers advisor so David what would you like to do with your life would you like to be in the public and be a subject and pay tax and work and uh, commit to servitude you know uh, get a job for in commercial intercourse and do what the majority of everybody does general public or would you like to get access to your estate and um, would you like to uh, transfer via endorsement discharge use private remedy and um, access your possibly you know equitable interest i mentioned treasury direct account you know where i'm coming from the gold in the vatican etc i think then you know we could be after having such information presented to us first-hand knowledge meetings of the minds making uh, an agreements notions of such then we could be called ignorant but as we are not from oxford cambridge eton etc and um, we didn't go to these private schools, what are called public schools, but we didn't have that opportunity. We didn't have the knowledge. We didn't knowingly enter into agreements. We didn't agree to be surety, trustee, etc. So therefore, um, ignorance of the law, um, well, we would need to have an opportunity to become knowledgeable of that, to indeed become ignorant. Uh, and uh, there was no opportunity. There was no time. There was no anything. So uh, f forgive me for that wording there. The Oxford Manual of Styles and Chicago Manual of Styles or Styles Manual. Um, why have I put that there? Capital letters. Um, we'll expand on that later in this document, page 12 of 91. What is a person? In the imaginary world of legal fiction, all commerce is legal fiction. A person is always an artificial legal person of one kind or another legally generated a legal person is any subject matter to which the law attributes a merely legal or fictitious personality this extension is one of the most noteworthy feats of the legal imagination legal persons being the arbitrary creations of the law may be of as many kinds of the law may be as many kinds as the law pleases those recognized by our own system. However, all fall within a single class, namely corporations or body bodies corporate. 
Source, Jurisprudence, 7th Edition, Sweet and Maxwell Limited, 1924, Section 113, page 336. Natural person, oxymoron, a perversion of itself. You know, I can't say that enough. A human being naturally born versus a legally generated juridical person. Natural authentic flesh and blood man is not a natural person, but legally a natural person is recognised at law. Black's Law Edition, second, Black's Law Dictionary, second edition. Artificial person, a non-human entity that is created by law and is legally different, owning its own rights and duties. Black's Law Dictionary, second edition. What is a person? Black's Law Dictionary, and I have a link there for that. Person means an individual, a firm, a partnership, an association, a fiduciary, an executor or administrator, a government entity, a limited liability company, or a per or a corporation. Just take a moment there, okay? So when we say and why we say it, our methodology and how we've come to bring this information to you and share with you is, you know, the police may stop, troopers may stop and say, do you have anything upon your person of which you need? we need to be aware of during just a routine attempted or a stop and search, you know, your person. So if you agree to be a person and you want to be a person, great. But uh, we self-governing um, initiates of self with the attainment of higher knowledge and um, the principality of good and bad and sin and um, straying from the path. We are not a person, you know, names are for companies, persons are companies, but names are for persons. So we'll go again. Person means an individual, a firm, a partnership, an association, a fiduciary, an executor or administrator, a governmental, a governmental entity, a limited liability company or a corporation. We can reference, and this is random, but it's worthy of referencing because I like to go England, America, Canada, and New Zealand and show that there is um, a similar vein of, uh, of insanity um, throughout the continents. Okay, so we're going to look at Indiana Code, Title IX, Motor Vehicles, Article 13, General Provisions and Definitions, Chapter 2. Um, and you can look at the person, Section 124, Subsection A. Individual as a noun, this term denotes a natural person and may in proper cases include artificial persons. Black's Law Dictionary, page 773, 6th edition, 1990, US versus Middleton, number 99 10518 f.3d 1207, 9th circulation 2000. The term person does not include the sovereign wilson versus obama indian tribe 442 u.s.653 1979 a juridical person is a non-human legal entity that is not a single natural person but an organization recognized by law as a legal person such as a corporation government agency or non-government organization also known as an artificial person juridical entity jur juridic person and juristic person or legal persons a juridical person maintains certain duties and rights as enumerated under relevant laws the rights and responsibilities of a juridical person are distinct from those of the natural persons const constituting it. Since ancient times, associations have been known as the original form of the juridical person. This is documented for the first century AD for Jewish trading companies. In Roman law, too, the institution already had significance, although it was not called as such. Conceptually, it included institutions such as the state, communities, corporations, universitats, and their associations of persons and assets, as well as associations. At least three persons were required in Rome to found an association. In law, a legal person is any person or thing, less ambiguously, any legal entity that can do the things a human person is usually able to do in law or at law. They say in law, but it's at law. 
such as enter into contracts, sue and be sued, own property and so on. The reason for the term legal person is that some legal persons are not people. <laughs> Company, wow, who'd have thought it? Companies and corporations are persons legally speaking. They can legally do most of the things ordinary persons can do, but they are clearly not people in the ordinary sense. Lord help me, you see, it's getting messy now, but to us, it's common knowledge. To others, we need to get this information out there. You know, um, I really am sorry about the outlay and the way I'm doing this, but there is no other way. OK, I need to give you substance. I need to give you the facts of the matter. I need to give you case and point references. And this is going to be done. Back to basics. David, where do I start? Here is where you start. I'm sorry. You know, it's probably going to be a three hour video. It's 96, 91 pages, 26,000 words. <sighs> There, I shouldn't apologise for this, but I am going to apologise for what has been done to us and our alleged ignorance of it. So in some instances, ignorance is bliss, and I understand why ignorance is bliss to a lot of the masses. There are therefore two kinds of legal entities, human and non-human. In law, a human person is called a natural person. <coughs> Stop. <laughs> Rewind selector. There are therefore, there are therefore two kinds of legal entities, human and non-human. At law, a human person is called a natural person, <laughs> sometimes also a physical person, and a non-human person is called a juridical person, sometimes also a juridic, juristic, artificial, legal, or fictitious person. Latin, persona ficta. Juridical persons are entities such as corporations and firms in some jurisdictions and many government agencies. They are treated in law as if they were persons. Persons have names and names are for companies. Let me just have a look at the chat room and check that all is well. Loud and clear. Okay, let me see here. Hello to Indiglo scribes that now upload this and say uh, hello to you now, as well as the others here. There is a YouTube channel I follow called Autodidactic that covers Flat Earth, Mud Flood and Tartaria. Easy London Underground. Thank you for that. Lisa, what a comment. It could even have started something now. Just about made it. CM, hello. I used to enjoy a warming sip or two of a good port. What, what? Oh, yes. Uh, I used to have a cheeky Vimto when I was a DJ, which was a WKD Blue um, in a pint, two bottles in a pint glass with a double port. The only time I've ever knowingly drank port. Sparrow, person, Sparrow Hawk, I will say. Person, modern, a character that is a human being or colour of man being. This is so good, David. Thank you, Lisa. Um, Greg H, all good. So we will continue on. I just wanted to say hello to my uh, Indie Glow scribes because I'm going to download this and try to upload it for them to have some material to watch. Because not everybody has migrated to uh, SPLS Pro as the backup channel. And as Indie keeps going in the sin bin for revealing truths, um, you know, I'm mighty glad that you're here and I have this outlet. <sighs> well, you've buzzed me up now. I'm, uh, I'm buzzing. Well, not. While natural persons acquire legal personality naturally simply by being born or before that in some jurisdictions, juridical persons must have legal personality conferred on them by some unnatural legal process. And it is for this reason that they are sometimes called artificial persons in the most common case incorporating a business. Legal personality is usually acquired by registration with a government agency set up for the purpose. In other cases, it may be primarily legislation. An example would be the Charity Commission in the UK, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, 16 advocates for the provision of legal identity for all, including birth registration by 2030 as part of the 2030 Agenda. So I wanted to just take a moment to uh, 
to take that in. Page 14 of 91. I'm going to do it. While natural persons acquire legal personality, and it's got naturally in brackets, simply by being born, okay, not birth, but simply by being born or before that, in some jurisdictions, juridical persons must have a legal personality conferred on them by some unnatural legal process. And it is for this reason that they are sometimes called artificial persons. In the most common case, incorporating a business, legal personality is usually acquired by registration with the government agency set up for the purpose, the General Registry Office, births, deaths, marriages. And we look, we're going to look at Lorraine Kelly in a bit, and Lorraine, and we're going to use her as an example with regards to her tax uh, charges. As legal, and when I talk about there are sometimes or quite often is the case that I find the uh, law of England, the uh, common laws of England, the high courts, um, um, I hold them in contempt and I find that there are um, contradictory, um, paradoxical uh, situations within the cognition of what the bleep is going on. That paragraph there is exactly a primer prime example of what I am faced with and what I understand your pain and I hope you understand my pain with having to get all of this information and try to put it together in document video form for us to interact and chat about and uh, I do hope you're making notes and if you're here at the end of this reading then we'll uh, you can make them note you can take them notes type them in and I will answer the questions and we will expand and I will look at your comments because I can't keep uh, looking at the screen, the chat screen. As legal personality is a prerequisite to legal capacity, the ability of any legal person to amend, i.e. enter into, transfer, etc., rights and obligations, it is a prerequisite for an international organisation to be able to sign international treaties in its own name. Reference recent court case, Lorraine, capital Lorraine, and Lorraine Kelly, lowercase. <clears throat> the term legal person can be ambiguous because it is often used as a synonym of terms that refer only to non-human legal entities, specifically in con contradistinction to natural person. Definitely says contradistinction. Artificial personality, juridical personality or juristic personality is the characteristic of a non-living entity regarded by law as having the status of personhood so you think of the show lorraine that's hosted and presented by the woman lorraine kelly so she has um, a, a tv personality yes when we're talking about personalities and persons we'll expand on that later but uh, a juridical or artificial person, Latin, persona ficta, remember what I said a few paragraphs ago, also jur juristic person, has a legal name and has certain rights, protections, privileges, responsibilities and liabilities at law, similar to those of a natural person. <laughs> the concept of a juridical person is a fundamental legal fiction. It is pertinent to the philosophy of law as it is essential to laws affecting a corporation's affecting a corporation, it's research corporations law. So when we talk about legal fiction, legal, and you may remember those billboards some years ago, to use a legal name is fraud. Remember that was a uh, anonymous uh, lot of billboards that went up. I actually did copy a bit of that and used the logo iconography for Sovereign um, Paralegals uh, some years ago. And I talked extensively to Stephen Bincham McRae about this, went into um, certain aspects of this fiction, okay, and uh, helping to uh, help others understand what a fiction is. So it's not... Um, anything but as it is written and said and referenced and paraphrased here for you then to take and uh, digest juridical personhood brotherhood neighborhood falsehood you know words that end in hood juridical personhood allows one or more natural persons universitas personarum to act as a single entity or body corporate 
for legal purposes. In many jurisdictions, artificial personality allows that entity to be considered under law separately from its individual members. For example, for example, in a company limited by shares, its shareholders, they may sue and be sued, enter into contracts, incur debt and own properties. Entities with legal personality may also be subjected to certain legal obligations, such as the payment of taxes. An entity with legal personality may shield its members from personal liability. So when I say doing business as, we have a company. My company is known as Mr. David Jeremita, all caps. Okay, and it's subject to allegedly uh, there to the taxation and it has uh, can be sued and it can enter into contracts and incur debt and own properties. You see, in the name public property, the person, the business, the company, uh, the birth certificate, driving license, passport, name, surname, date of birth, national insurance number. The uh, let me show you, let me show you what I mean by certified person. And we shall continue on. It will just take me a minute. All right. <laughs> I have come prepared today. Here is my, so there's a copy of my uh, a redacted edit of my certified person for you to have a look at. All right, that's a, a copy, a photo copy of, um, of the birth certificate issued by the General Registry Office, a.k.a. my certified person. Yes, you're familiar with that, the watermark that's going through it there. You may or may not be able to see that. Falsehood. In some common law jurisdictions, a distinction is drawn between corporation aggregate, such as a company which is composed of a number of members, and a corporation sole which is a public office of legal personality separated from the individual holding the office. These entities have separate legal personality. Historically, most corporations' souls, corporations' soul were ecclesiastical in nature. For example, the office of the Archbishop of Canterbury is a corporation's soul, but a number of other public offices are now formed as corporations' soul. QE2, Queen Elizabeth II, is the corporation soul. So um, I put this in here, revisited this because one of our admins, uh, known commonly as Claire, has um, found it very interesting and uh, got a teeth sunk into what exactly is a corporation soul. Big up to you, Claire, and thank you for uh, for the work that you do. Thank you to all the admins, but um, thank you, Claire, particularly for, you know, uh, delving deep into this area the concept of juridical personality is not absolute piercing the corporate veil refers to looking at the individual natural persons acting as agents involved in a company action or decision this may result in a legal decision in which the rights or duties of a corporation or public limited company are treated as the rights or liabilities of that corporation's members or directors the concept of a juridical person is now central to Western law in both common law and civil law countries, but it is also found in virtually every legal system. Examples. Some examples of a juridical person include cooperatives, co-ops, co-ops, business organization owned and democratically operated by a group of individuals for their mutual benefit. <clears throat> the United Kingdom Corporation, the government of the United Kingdom Corporation. Corporations are bodies corporate. Corporations are bodies corporate created by a statute or character. The corporation's soul is a corporation constituted by a single member in a particular capacity, and that person's success is in the same capacity in order to give them some legal benefit or advantage, particularly that of perpetuity, which a natural person could not have had. Examples are a religious officiant in that capacity or the crown in the commonwealth realms a corporation aggregate is a corporation constituted by more than one member and um, you can look at i shall try to put this link um, jordan maxwell link in the chat for you now 
and I shall also screen share and sh tell you where it is. So if you'd like to follow that, to look at the great uh, Jordan of the Maxwell found talking about corporations. So this was shared by Claire the other day, um, reference um, what she had found and um, I borrowed it from her and I'm um, sharing it with you today. So if I go screen share, that's where it will take you. And that's what you will be looking at. Jordan Maxwell Corporation Sol the International. Um, and there's links and stuff to jordanmaxwellshow.com. All right, so there's no comments on that. But if you'd like to listen to that for the whole 15 minutes at some point and make a note, all right, then, uh, then I would appreciate you doing so to get a better idea of what go on there. Moving on. Oh no, my man, so. Take a drink, have a moment, rinse your brain under the tap. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Where are we going to next? What else can I find to, uh, that's quite a nice one, isn't it? Got some relevant ones, backgrounds for you to be appeased by. I hope the camera is a bit better. I've uh, got the good one out. <sighs> Municipal corporations or municipalities are creatures of statute. Other organizations may be created by statute as legal persons, including European Economic Interest Groupings, EEIGS. Unincorporated associations, that is aggregates of two or more persons, are treated as juridical persons in some jurisdictions, but not others. Partnerships, an aggregate of two or more persons to carry on a business in common for profit and created by agreement. Traditionally, partnerships did not have continuing legal personality, but many jurisdictions now treat them as having independent legal personalities. Companies are corporations. I hope that you have uh, got the uh, gist of now. The term offers often refers to a business association that carries on an industrial enterprise, although companies may take other forms, such as trade unions. Blah, 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 we don't need that. Sovereign states are legal persons. In the international legal system, various organizations possess legal personality. These include intergovernmental organizations, the United Nations, the Council of Europe, and some other international organizations, including the Sovereign Military Order of Malta, a religious order. Sovereign Military Order, have you ever heard anything so dark in all your times? The European Union, EU, has a legal personality since the Lisbon Treaty entered into force on the 1st of December 2009, that the EU has legal personality is a prerequisite for the EU to join the European Convention on Human Rights, aka ECHR. However, in 2014, the EU decided not to be bound by the rulings of the European Court of Human Rights. Temples in some legal systems have separate legal personality. Now hear this, this is a nice little bit for you. The Wang the Wanganu or Wanganyu River was granted legal personality in March 2017 under New Zealand law because the Wanganu or Wanganyu Maori tribe regard the river as their ancestor. Oh, that's a fun fact that might make you smile there. It really did me. I, know, I just couldn't resist putting it in. Also in March 2017, the High Court of Uttarakhand declared the Ganges River a legal person in a move that, according to one newspaper, could help in efforts to clean the pollution-choked rivers. As of 6 of April 2017, the ruling has been commented on in Indian newspapers to be hard to enforce, with assertions that experts who do not anticipate immediate benefits, that the ruling is hardly game-changing, the experts who believe that any any follow-up action is unlikely and the judgment is deficient to the extent it acted without hearing others in states outside Uttarakhand who have stakes in the matter. It's as much as I can find on that there for you, those two, I thought two rivers there. Crimea River, 
Not all organizations have legal personality. For example, the board of directors of a corporation, legislator, legislator or governmental agency typically are not persons in that they have no ability to exercise legal rights independent of the corporation or political body which they are a part of. We can look at ecclesiastical dictionary, person, ecclesiastical, church speak, persons whom a special tie connects with the church, either because they have received holy orders or because they have taken vows in a religious order or congregation approved by the church. The word ecclesiastic describes a member of the clergy, typically someone associated with a Christian church. The word ecclesiastic has origins in the Greek word ecclesiastes, meaning speaker in an assembly or church, and can be used to describe someone associated with a church, such as a cleric or priest. What is an ecclesiastical position? An ecclesiastical office is the office at a church and a nun's habit is ecclesiastical dress. The ecclesiastical hierarchy is the pecking order of the clergy and high ranking clergy are considered to be ecclesiastical authorities. Secular is the opposite of ecclesiastical. What is an example of ecclesiastical? The definition of, of ecclesiastical is something derived or related to the Christian church. A written work or associated with the Christian church is an example of ecclesiastical work. What is the legal definition of ecclesiastical related to ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical law, ecclesiastical belonging to or set apart from the church as distinguished from civil or secular? We don't need that. We don't need that. What is a human positive law? Positive laws, Latin, ius positi posit um are human-made laws that oblige or specify an action. More specifically, positive law may be characterised as law actually and specifically enacted or adopted by proper authority for the government of an organised jural society. Now we have come across and I have um, shared PDFs by Franco Collins, positive laws, this uh, continuation of the Vatican City canons, the ecclesiastical canons, it seemed to end about the 1900 range. And Franco Collins has uh, talked about, um, he's a name I haven't mentioned up until this point. It's a perfect segue to enter into Frank, um, positive laws, canons, and um, his uh, PDF with regards to the uh, reference against the Vatican canons. And then I would also like to interject Helena Blavatsky, and the uh, referencing of the Tibetan canons. I don't need to know what it's got here. What is an ecclesiastical marriage? What are the different properties of rights? And then we're going to reference Bible, some uh, KJV references. Um, for there is no respect of persons with God. The great passion in the life of the Apostle Paul was to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to make known the truth regarding salvation. Romans. 1 15 to 16 chapter 1 verse 15 16 so as much as in me is i am ready to preach the gospel to you that are rome that are at rome also for i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the jew first and also to the greek before a man can ever be convinced that jesus christ is the savior he must be convicted in his heart of his need for salvation. Paul understood this, and so according to the revelation given him by God, he set forth not only Christ the Saviour, but also the desperate condition of the unsaved man. In order to expose man for what he truly is, Paul stripped away all of man's costumes, all his garments of self-righteousness, and made him stand naked before the mirror in the light of God. Romans 2.11 for there is no respect of persons with God. God is not a respecter of persons. This truth he made known to his prophet Samuel when he was considering which of Jesse's sons would inherit the throne of King Saul. Samuel 16, 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, 
because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. God is never fooled by man's outward appearance or by his performances. Matthew uh, 6, 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. God sees what is going on inside man's heart. Ezekiel thirty-three thirty-one, And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words but they will not do them for with their mouth, they shew much love or show S H E W is written, but their heart goeth after their covet covetousness. Mark seven, six, he answered and said unto them, we have Esaias prophesied of you hypocrites as it is written. This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Before you and I can get anywhere in our walk with God, we must realize that God is not interested in our performances. Actors perform, actors stage, the whole world is a stage. Performances, loosely termed there, you need to get that word locked in. God is not impressed by you or me. He wants our hearts to be right with him. The story of Abel and Cain teaches us what God does respect. Genesis four one to five and adam knew eve his wife and she conceived and bare cain and said i have gotten a man from the lord when we say god created man and she didn't say i've gotten a brand new person i have given birth you know she has born a man she has gotten a man from the lord and she again bare his brother abel and abel was a keeper of sheep but cain was a tiller of the ground and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground, an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offerings. Leviticus is good reference there, but that's too much. I won't go through that. Chronicles, Isaiah, Psalm, Deuteronomy, James references. Man-made philosophies and religions have for their premise the innate goodness of mankind. They suppose the way of holiness is to fan the flame of human kindness, love and understanding. This is the way of Cain, to deny man's sinful state and to reject salvation offered by Christ. If we are ever going to further the gospel, we must see people as God sees them. All men are sinners. There is no respect of persons with God. All men in the story and in the teachings and in the codified text of the various editions of the Bible, all men will need Christ. There is no other way to eternal life. And I, David, son of Jeremita, am one of the men who has the privilege of telling my initiates about this story and our way of decoding the, uh, the, the text therein, finding the messages and translating and finding the interpretations and references because as we've come to learn londinium templars uh, london city law society laws based on the bible you will find that within the 10 commercial maxims and biblical precepts presented by us and uh, found um, in the public domain for you to go and look at and you will see especially referencing exodus in there with the law of commerce it is my solemn duty to share critical criteria and knowledge with you all as I progress upon my journey of enlightenment and move from a dis disciple to an apostle, an initiate of self and obtain higher knowledge. Teaching of the Corpus Hermeticum, Hermes Trismegistus, Thoth, or Thoth. And that, that then, I have something prepared before I carry on for us to use. There's my man, Bum Shankar. E, come on, Kez. It's our Kez. That's um, perhaps not the best. I've now got the bird head on my head, but we'll continue on. <clears throat> In a court, one is asked to make the person present known. So here we go now. I don't know how long we've been rolling for. You've now got something tangible and articulate. Ten past nine. Also about 90 minutes then. 
a hundred minutes and we're getting into court in court at court sorry not in a court at a court one is asked to make the person present or known here are the unique identifiers for a legal certified person let me just take a moment check the chat shout you out and say sharpie sparky are the links on spl fella the links for what remind me of what you was wanting they don't use man or woman in my boys primary school it's person okay thank you malcolm cm these live streams are so educational with such an abundance of knowledge we are indebted to you david bless you all much love to you bosh we're indebted to one another I am just um, a humble servant of my higher self, of the most high. Um, when we say charitable trust, I give away research and uh, tens of thousands of words and my time, um, information, you know, for a measly, meagre 25 pence a week, 12 um, pounds a year, 12 promises a year for um, our domain. So um, this is part of my charitableness and part of my um fulfillment of the sacred contract to my extended family um all of you here on spl's pro and uh, my scribes and uh, supporters and channel members on indie glow um i miss you all um and i'm sorry about the band but there's nothing i can do there so um you know uh, we move on and we do the best we can and i'm very humbled by um, your praise your grumbles your um, your critique, you know, constructive criticism, the continuously improving, and um, it is my uh, my privilege and honour. I bow before you all. I feel like I should uh, move out of the way and let the bird man take the screen. The ibis, it's an ibis actually, ibis headed man, being. So in a court, one is asked to make the person present or known. Here are the unique identifiers for a legal certified person. And hopefully you all know what a legal certified person looks like and is by now. You have a name, a date of birth, a surname, a national insurance number, social security number, social insurance number, passport, birth certificate and driver's license. My date of birth is hearsay. I was born in May 1978. So being a little bit cocksure there and being a bit cocky, what is your date of birth? D-O-B. Man doesn't have a date of birth. I was born and I was born in May 1978. So if you're going to ask me for my date of birth, David, I'm going to play with that and say my date of birth is hearsay. You know, where I was very small and young and uh, weak at the age of one day. And I'm not sure when I was born. I'll have to ask my mum, to be fair my date of birth, and we're going to get into this technicality of it uh, later in this paragraph. So I was born and my born date is May 1978. I only have one birthday, and that was back in May 1978. To repeatedly celebrate a birthday each and every full year from being born is insanity. Would you like to think about that? Man is born only once. Man can go through a rebirth and become reborn, as detailed by the great mystic Christ Jesus, as one obtains at the temples of the Ment a Christ consciousness, as one becomes conscionable. My person has a date of birth. My certified legal person, a citizen, that was created, birthed on the date that my mother registered my birth with the General Registry Office officer. So... You are born, and then a time later, there was a registration, an informant. Mum is the informant there, and um, or mum and dad are the informant. And then the citizen is created, and your certified person, citizen, is given, you know, as a, evidence of an entry of the extract of the registrar's book there. My certified person, citizen, was birthed on the registration date several weeks after man or I was born. So in a court, one is invited to state your legal name. Are you Mr. Mrs. Ms. All caps. Now here at this point, we have previously over the last few decades fallen foul to this question. Shout out to the 20 that are watching. That's, um, that's respected and appreciated. Please feel free to share this uh, mammoth, epic, um, meaty episode of 
um, paradoxical hokum, and um, I hope you're enjoying it. So now here at this point, we have previously over the last few decades uh, fallen foul to this question, you know, give me your name. A person can be a corporation and vice versa, as detailed previously in this document and broadcast to you. A corporation can be a person. So let me state this fact. A legal corporation is a soulless and dead entity. Bum shanker, okay? If people can be corporations and corporations can be people, as I've detailed to you, a legal corporation is a soulless and dead entity. So the letters and communications that come to Mr. and Mrs. Allcaps, when you are with the spell summonsed, you know, to the venue, the county, district, magistrate, uh, crown, etc. You're summoned, like, um, you know, you summons a ghost at a seance there, spelling, spells, and uh, sorry, but here we go. Um, you know, uh, soulless and dead entities summons the, the person they have written to is a soulless and dead entity. Hence why those in the free man, common law and practical lawful dissent movement have insisted upon claiming that they are not a dead person and that they are alive and well as flesh and blood beings with biological origins, a.k.a. man. The courts are interested in that. They know what the crack is. I'm sure most of them, 90% of them do. And there's a way and a means of um, presenting and doing business to avoid getting a summary judgment or um, being there and not agreeing to be the name, the taking, let me, I'll explain it in detail as I go on, I'm digressing, and they will issue a warrant for failure to attend because the person has not been known to be presented and present. So, you know, there's issues here that we've drastically um, got to improve. So I shall not get into the three jurisdictions that the court required to obtain authority and jurisdiction over oneself, man. This is done by man claiming the title and legal name of Mr. Mrs. Ms. All caps. This is known, what is known as joinder to the legal name by authentic flesh and blood man. Personage, as referenced above at the beginning of the chapters of this document and the presentation I'm giving to you in this live show today, personage as referenced above and baratory, the civil administrative courts of the United Kingdom Corporation you know, our business venues that operate as a dark satanic death cult that feeds on the low hanging fruit. G Star, I do like that to reference uh, low hanging fruits. One of the three jurisdictions that the courts and presiding judge, banker of the bench indeed require is the personal jurisdiction. They have the other two in the bag of the three, they require a third, and that's the personal jurisdiction. Person, personnel. This is why I've gone through the liberty of putting this document in such a way that it should flow and it should all be clicking or making sense or enlightenment. You may need to watch this video several times. You may need to read this uh, 91 page document several times, print it, make notes, you know, post it stamps, things like that, have chats with us and etc. Um, so they need is the personal jurisdiction, hence why they will ask you for and um, prior to proceedings, the, you know, according to their rhetoric, it requires the legal person, trustee, surety be confirmed to be present. The state owned and crown copyrighted legal person, citizen, defendant, one cannot represent or represent something that is not already known to the legal system, the law society and their crown copyright legalese language. One can only represent, represent that which is recognized to the state system. So when man is said to, you know, we can argue that man is present and you can't, are you going to discriminate against me because I am man? It's a clever little paragraph term sentence to say, I am man and I am here with my person, you know, and uh, if you're going to choose to discriminate against me for being man as man is referenced in the bible you know we can get technical on this later you know i could go on i could have written 250 pages in this document and expanded and splintered and interjected in segues but i'm choosing not to but i know there were ones out there that can help me um with this and put comments in and feedback and chat with us and um, i appreciate that in advance and i'm aware 
And I need to let you know that for time and um, saturation points and practicality reasons, um, this version one draft, you know, contains what it contains. And when we get to version five, we'll say or whatever, it will have the added extras and bits that we talk about and your feedback, praise and criticism in there. It will be continuously improved. So you cannot represent something that is not already known to the system, the law society, their language. You can only represent represent that which is recognised to the state system. Man is not recognised nor honoured within the civil administrative United Kingdom lower courts um, mechanism. Persons are. And I've told you at the beginning, I've given you, you see how I'm flowing this now. So you can't really say, David, but yeah, but because I've already given you everything that you need and the reasons for that. So as much as I love you and respect you, let the governor carry on the show and we will speak about the, uh, you know, in a bit. Neither is man recognised or honoured within the law and higher court system of England and Wales and the English law system. You could argue that you've done an ecclesiastical deed, Paul, and now that you have, you know, well, okay, you could. But you know what an ecclesiastical deed, Paul, does for you? It makes you a true person. You see, so you're still a person. You might not be an artificial person or a juridical person or a natural person, or, <laughs> but you're a true person. But what does it say? For God, there is no respect of persons. So we shall hold that in contempt. It's close, but it's not right. Here's Mr. Chips with another quick reminder. <sighs> One can only represent that which is known or familiar to the inner city Londinium Crown Templars and agents, their certified legal persons or one's legal personality. The agents of the Crown will only recognise their Crown copyrighted legal person, legal personality, name, birth certificate, certified person. Authentic and sovereign man will never be able to be legally recognised. Incorrect jurisdiction. Man is not legal. We are law, as in folk law, L-O-R-E, not L-A-W, okay? And we're not legal. So solicitors, uh, you know, lawyers, lawyers, they operate legally. So they should be called legalers, but they're called, they're called lawyers, lawyers, liars, but they're not actually at law. They're operating legally. Barristers, on the other hand, and Crown Courts and Higher Courts and Supreme Courts, Courts of Appeal and International Criminal Courts and so forth, still have paradoxical meetings of, and you'd be hard-pressed to be anything but a type of a person. Equity acts in persona. You see why we have to go through the areas and the pathways that we've done. It takes a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of sleepless nights. Meditation is the key for me. <laughs> so authentic and sovereign man will never be able to be legally recognized in correct jurisdictions. Man does not have the capacity to be legally charged. Man is referenced and recognized under mosaic and to some extent ecclesiastical laws. Humans are referenced within the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We can also, uh, Article 6, we can also look at protected characteristics and to the Equality Act, as I said, you're going to discriminate against me for being man, and a great deal of a lot more areas, and that's open to expansion. Here in England, we see the merger of the church and the state. Hence why Queen Elizabeth II has handed over the running of the UK government corporation to the remit of the Lords, the courts and the UK Prime Minister. Ministers are found where? Primarily within the church. The ministers and executives of the UK government directorate are answerable to the ministerial code. Well, ministers are. I've put executives there of the UK, but it's strictly ministers that answer to the ministerial code. You may have heard that of latter months and years of Brexit and so forth and the breaching of by the government and Boris in particular. Um, Priti Patel, I do believe, or maybe Nicola Sturgeon. So there's enough there for you to go on. We have the ministerial code. You can find the ministerial code. When one appoints a minister in office as one's trustee, the minister is compelled to honour these duties within their fiduciary capacity. If the minister disclaims these duties, then one has a right to remedy and recourse. And one area of support is found within the ministerial code. In America and the incorporated United States of America, America Incorporated, USA, Inc., 
the church and the state are indeed separated. The complete opposite of what we have here in England, that which resides within the United Kingdom Corps and Corporation also. So as lovely as it is to find videos and Jordan Maxwell's and Santos Bonacci's and Bill Turner's and X, Y and Z, um, it doesn't always um, help because what is good for one is not good for all. And we'll get into that later in this document. So we have to remember how America was colonised and its bloodstained history, the journey from the early pioneers unto the USA of modern time. It was initially how America was colonized and how now it is the USA, the landmass America hosts the United States of America and uh, US incorporate the corporate corporation, you know, United Kingdom Corporation. It's a bit of a giveaway there. It tells you in itself the UK corporation. But the UK is a corporation. Shock horror. Well, it's, it's clearly there in its name in itself. One can only present one's legal, one's legal personality, one's name is hearsay. You know, I don't have a name, names are for companies. My full name, give me your full name, an officer once said to me, time's gone by. I said, my full name is David. He's like, well, what's, what's your surname? I said, no, you've asked me for my name. My full name is David. I could have said I am called David, but I wanted to play. I didn't want to aggravate the officer at the time. And um, I was um, in a little bit of a pickle. I'd done nothing wrong. I was um, being stopped for a uh, traffic officer. What's your name? Give me your full name. And I, I, he asked me my name. I said, my name's David. What's your full name? I went, my full name is David. Or put another way, I'm commonly known and called David. I am sometimes known to go by a name officer, but only when that is a benefit to me. You know, are you the driver of this vehicle? I'm sat behind the wheel of the iron horse. There's nobody else there. He's at the window and he's asking me, so it's not a given uh, if I'm a driver of the vehicle because there's a question asked, a 50-50 answer, yes or no. I said, I will present you my driver. I am traveling in a non-commercial private capacity and here is my driver. And I uh, passed the driver to him. You know, is this your vehicle? I had to go into all of that. No, it is not my vehicle. It is not stolen. It is not listed as stolen. It's private property. A vehicle, you know, can I just stop you? May I ask you what language you are speaking? Because I'm commanding and using for the purposes of clarity and avoidances of doubt, the Oxford English definitions. And I believe your language, officer, with all due respect, whether you know it or don't know it, it's coming from legalese. So we have, uh, uh, you know, a misunderstanding here and I'm not trying to be vexatious. It is my wish to be going and on my way. If I've done something, you know, uh, or there's an issue. I'd like you to make me aware of it and I will remedy it at the earliest convenience. So, you know, as soon as you get these interactions, if the, the officer is in a bad way, a bad mood, angry, looking to make impressions, new, young, uh, millions of reasons why, you know, we've had, a, we've had the... Uh, police force, you know, up in arms with independent inquiries and, uh, um, you know, dishonourable conducts over the years, especially after um, Sarah Everard and uh, there's certain things there and uh, misconduct and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, miscarriages of justice and WhatsApp groups being found, you know, and to think it's just horrendous. Not every officer is bad. I know that, you know, but there aren't any constables and peacekeepers here to do service and they've come out into the public as part of a corporation they're bothering man and they're looking as crown agents or agents of the crown the london crown to incur fines fees and penalties instead of us all being united and on the same page working together you know uh, they could be out doing other things traffic officers are traffic officers and they primarily you know manage the traffic so when they ask my full name you know and if i'm the driver and this is my vehicle i always am humble and non-vexatious and non-aggressive so when they say what is your full name what is your name and i just say david you know what's your full name they're looking for surname there you know i just say my full name is david you know i have a name and i'm sometimes known to go by it but only when it's a benefit to me are you legally trained officer is another question i asked him and if so what are your qualifications what institution are you licensed and registered and governed by he couldn't answer that question he actually realized then 
no, I'm not legally trained. No, I'm not legally trained and a man traveling, but I'm legally aware. My mum's head of Derby Law University and she's told me these things. I'm not a free man, I'm not a sovereign citizen. Okay, I am a sovereign because I'm not a sovereign. That's another oxymoronic statement. And I had to politely, at the end of it, he left and he was like, I'm going to make some notes and check that out. He realized he wasn't legally trained and he was out doing a legal job with legal public commercial liabilities of which he was a little bit worried about i do believe so all started with a little innocent traffic stop and a name the state and judiciary are looking to afford me or you man uh, benefits by way of fines fees and forfeitures you know we're not guilty of anything we've done no crime there is no victim offenses and infractions they will argue it's a criminal offense another oxymoronic statement it's either a criminal act and as a victim or it's an offense and an infraction which is generally applicable to government employees and those involved in public commercial intercourse of which i am neither so we go to this first one um, so they're looking to give fines, fees and forfeitures. I politely and respectfully decline and it's court as well. They were looking to give you fines, fees and forfeitures, um, you know, and they're looking to give that the person and they want you to be the person. So I politely and respectfully decline this benefit. You know, I shall enter into the court, the commercial body of my person, my legal personality, my certified person, my business. I am doing business as Mr. David Jeremita, shufty it that way, you see. So in a court, they're asking for the person and the name. Why? The civil, administrative, arbitratory hearing. They want to give fines, fees and forfeitures. These are benefits to the state and not to you and I. I, David, am the agent in office, the principal and the attorney of my own estate, the beneficiary to any and all civil impositions can then be afforded to my legal personality, my certified person, by way of presenting one certified person into the court, one's birth certificate. We are not the defendant, David, and, and backwards DNA, Jeremy Eater. We are here today for the administration of justice. I am called David commonly known as David, son of Jeremita. I have a person and he is here with me. I'm doing business as Mr. Allcaps. That is my persona, my person, certified person. One's issue of a birth certificate is evidence of the facts. I am the sole shareholder of that corporation known as Mr. David Jeremita. We are here today for the administration of justice and are here by way of special appearance to help clear up the controversies surrounding the legal name and will help you administer these claims exponentially. We are not the defendant. We are not a name. How can I be a name? How can you be a name? Names, noun, you know, a name, noun, noun starts with a capital letter, name starts with a capital letter, even if it's not all caps, can we just capital first letter the rest can be lowercase you could have mr mrs ms that's a title you don't really want to accept sir they might call you sir that's another title you know please sir in commercial restaurants and things waiters they will address you as sir madam miss you know titles you don't want them titles you don't want the name okay you don't want the afforded public liabilities associated with them or well, maybe you do i don't know as i said no legal advice here this is just um, a little bit of fun, a little bit of bass, a little bit of drums. So, English grammatical language, English literature, English language, nouns. A noun is a person, place, thing, or idea. A noun is a word for a noun is a word for person, place, thing, or idea. Nouns are often used with an article, the a or an the sorry comma a comma an but not always proper nouns always start with a capital letter common nouns do not nouns can be singular or plural concrete or abstract nouns show possession by adding apostrophe s nouns can function with different roles within a sentence for example a noun can be a subject subject that word again direct object indirect object subject complement or object of a preposition 
Example, the young girl brought me a very long letter from the teacher and then she quickly disappeared. Oh my, exclamation mark. Is this a correct sentence structure? Question mark. Pronoun. A pronoun is a word used in place of a noun. Well, there's been a lot of that talk about recently, hasn't there, with the gender fluid, um, gender in itself, um, the rainbow coming out and um, gender neutrality, pansexual. So she, we, they, it, you. A pronoun is a word used in place of a noun. A pronoun is usually substituted for a specific noun, which is called its anti... anti I always can't say this word. Antecedent. And, yeah, antecedent. Antecedent. In the sentence above, the antecedent for the pronoun, she is the girl. Pronouns are further defined by type. Personal pronouns refer to specific persons or things. Possessive pronouns indicate ownership. Reflect, ref, reflexive pronouns are used to emphasize another noun or pronoun. Relative pronouns introduce a subordinate clause and demonstrative, 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 it's got demon in it. Demonstrative pronouns identify point two or refer to nouns. You need to look at verbs, expressing actions or beings, adjectives adverbs, what a preposition is, conjunction, um, interjection. Names are nouns and are denoted by the capital letter used to start the name David, you know, as my person's name. So we look at nouns and proper nouns, okay, as I've discussed there and found when I looked at um, David Wynne Miller's Parse syntax, correct sentence structure, and all of this, and uh, then I found Noam Chomsky's um, publication from 1960s called Syntactic Structures, and they teach syntax in GCSE uh, English as well in modern day. So um, I was a little bit skeptical of using another copyrighted, um, invented language as well as it may be with mathematics and balance and certain things. Um, a scribe on my channel called Burn. Um, he uh, he's um, helped me understand the flow, the energy of letters, capitals, and uh, straight line letters, capital letters, lowercase letters, curvy letters. The energy going through that and um, syntax. And so I'm not an expert in it, but it's truly another world, and it's very amazing. All right, but we're sticking to names, and I am commonly known and as my given Christian calling is David. My mother called me David. When she was asked, when she was out and about in the pram, going about getting herself some shopping and whatever else back in the day, when she was asked, what have you always lovely, what have you called him? David is what my mother replied. My given name that my mother gave me is David. My full name is David. When I am asked to give my full name, if I give you my name, will you accept it? So I know we say we're called and we don't have names, but there's a, there's, a, there's a little play on this because you can just keep it simple and they can't process legally, civilly, any way, the system, legal, lawful system can't process just a given name. They require recognition of the Crown copyrighted state name, you know, and if you just stick to John, David, Steve, Jane, you know, uh, it won't go very far, but correctly, we are called. We don't have names at all. It's best to get out of that, but you can play on it and keep it simple and try it and see how far, even when the telephone calls and they ask for Mr. Mrs. Jane Doe, Jane Smith, John Doe, etc. You can say, no, this is John. There's a Mr. Such and Such there. And they can't identify who they want and they can't proceed with the call. They can't confirm the data. They can't process you at all. You know, if I give you my name, will you accept it? If the answer is yes, in a court-based scenario, then they can also accept the public liabilities associated. My person's name is Mr. David Jeremita. The birth certificate is a security instrument. Bonds are security instruments. Uh, research what security instruments are, and bear in mind there is a Securities Exchange Commission. The foundations are dark and negative. A due process of law is a metaphysical cover phrase for legal concepts such as corporations, which are property rights. 
These corpses are supernatural entities which do not have a verifiable existence, except to the eyes of a particular faith. Rules of law which reference these legal concepts are theorems, and jurisprudence is a special branch of the science of transcendental nonsense, a cult reference from the cabal courts, are religious temples of such cults. Legal is the undoing of God's law, foundations of law, law as follows. We found in the Judeo-Christian Bible, it tells a wonderful story, and it is in fact often referred to as the greatest story ever told. And so it seems to be, you know, you are now about to find out why. In the New Testament of Christian Bible, a provocative and most serious challenge is laid on the whole of Christianity. Since it bears directly upon this show document subject, we will quote it. If Christ be not risen, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is also in vain and we are found to be false witnesses of God. And if Christ not be raised, your faith is in vain. Ye are yet in your sins. In the New Testament, there is a warning given to all who would build a house. Namely, before you lay the foundation, find out what the foundation itself will rest on. Is it going to be solid rock? Or is it going to be sand? Yeah. The reason is obvious. Or well, said another way, you need to stand under the foundation to get a true understanding. The foundations. Let's closely examine the original conceptual foundations of the faith and then decide if Christ, if Christ not be risen. In order to do that, we must go back not 2,000 years to the birth of Christ, but eight to 10,000 years to the birth of modern man, civilization, which is why we, um, we mention pre-Christian uh, information and antiquities. We look at Antiquitech technology from antiquities and we also look at the antiquities and zero um, backwards to 10 12 thousand um, before common era bce before christ bc for when one seeks to establish foundations one must begin at the beginning not jump in halfway through and hope to get a grasp on it so remember when jesus spoke the truth to his accusers he would justify himself by quoting law First, he would quote God's law, and after quoting God's law, he would often quote the accuser's law and use that against them as well. For example, Jesus would say, did you never read in the scriptures? And then quote God's law. We shall not be judged by false, by false Christians of the church of transcendentalism and the worship of Saturnalia within this Satan's carnival. We are true Christians, Christians the generation of Christ consciousness in physical form, and we are exiting Satan's carnival. The trick is to distinguish within the Bible when the law is of nature and God, and when it is of man acting as God and vicar. I'm going to skip that for now because it's quite a long bit you know, but you can look at that and you can uh, find that in the document itself. I'm on page 28 of 91. Now I'm going to screen share again. This was given to us in our Facebook chat by Brother uh, John of the Middleton family. Okay. So I just want to say thank you to all those that are watching now. Thank you for your time, energy and love. Feel free to share this if you're finding it of particular interest or enlightening. I'll leave you a minute to read that while I go back to my settings and change the, uh, the background again. Where can we go? Might go to Petra. Do we like Petra? I'd love to go to Petra. I believe it was... Um, Backdrop of Jason and the Argonauts or Sinbad the Sailor. That's not Petra, that's Egypt's weeds. I'm covering, I'm covered up, and yeah, that's Petra, but can't see that because I'm now minimized. You should be looking at person. All right, I'll be with you in a second though. Sure which one. That's quite good. I love the uh the giants in the background of Ken. Where are we? 
person. So there you go. You got a chance to read that. I'm not sure what publication this was from. It could be Black's Law. You'll need to, as I've said at the beginning, check all the various dictionaries, implied meanings and definitions, but uh, you will find similar to this citation. So we're giving you a long time. You can pause the video and the uh, points and stop. So I don't need to hang on it too long. Artificial person, disabled person, fictitious person, interested person, juristic person, see artificial person, legal person, see artificial person, moral person. See, you see where I'm coming from and where I've got my information and backup from. It's not a belief, it's actual fact and knowledge about these persons. Person in loco parentis, in loco parentis, a person acting in the place of a parent person. You could look at that as the school, the, um, the school are trustees of our young stars, um, assets, young bloods, and they would be um, acting in place of a parent at times in loco parentis. All right, what else do we have for reference? Legal. All right, you can pause that as well. So legal adjective, le hyphen, oh, leg hyphen al, al, legal, the goal, I think it translates from Francais into English, of, based on, falling within, province of, occupied with law, required or appointed by law, recognised by law as a distinct, as distinct from equity, lawful, theo, of the mosaic law, of salvation by works, not faith, fiction, statement which is probably fictitious but admitted as true in order to enable some useful purpose as redress of wrong, etc., to be accomplished. Tender, see tenderly. So, therefore, you see, there's a dictionary. And again, I can't cite and quote that come from Brother John of the Middleton family in a chat we was having in our Facebook group some. Uh, some weeks ago when I thought I'd uh, keep them and share them and they've come in useful for this document and this show. Corporation aggregate, a corporation consisting of several persons, corporation sole, a corporation which consists of one person and his successors. So we was uh, talking and John happened to, you know, there's a few of you on the same wavelength. There's not just one person looking at one thing. Quite often what I find within our line of work is the syncretism and the synchronicity. It's, um, it's quite dazzling sometimes. It really is. Um, all right, we'll stop screen sharing and I will go back to full screen. I will skip that. Commercial intercourse, there is an act which they work very hard to conceive man that they represent you while knowing the contrary to be fact. That makes them devils and liars, uh, devil's advocates, you know, lawyers, lawyers, liars. From the minute they join the council government, offices and wards of the state, wardens are mainly but not exclusively found in prison, prison warden. Maybe you heard the term warden before estate, parish warden, uh, skipper, attention on deck, all rise, admiralty, maritime, again, connection, captain, the captain has an office, officers of the office, you know, skull and bones, fraternity, 322, two, pirate flags, again, the position is in controversy and any and all organisations of men, women that cover up these facts are also in controversy, including the judiciary courts and judgment ships. The judiciary are seemingly complicit in the deception and non-disclosure. If one does ask for full disclosure, as it relates to the use of dog Latin today called English, you know, American sign language, they run out of court, the battlefield. Yes, they do. Oxford and Chicago Manual of Styles for reference. They run out of the court because of the fact. In the paperwork, they are using various languages. Therefore, they run out of the court for one of two reasons. Concealment of the facts and or the right to silence. They are very, very weak and evil. The artificial person you possess is called a citizen, creating a contractual obligation to follow the laws of man's government over God's. The laws of government, Satan, govern only persons, demons, not living men. 
not dissimilarly the rules and regulations of commercial employees only regulate the demon person created as and called the employee another artificial status of personhood no man is bound by the rules of any corporation unless they are employed by that corporation, including all of the municipalities and offices of the government, the corporation nation. If you are employed, you are possessing an additional legal fictional status added to a person called an employee. So acts, statutes, legislation, even so much the uh, traffic codes and uh, traffic acts and all of this legislative codified constitution here non-codified constitution here in England and the codified constitution in America and other, you know, uh, codes, uh, penal codes uh, charged with felonies against. Those are for government employees and employees as such. Never mind, we have jobs and we are classified at that job. Job, as an employee, that aside, we're talking law, statute, legal, lawful, and um, therefore they are uh, only, you know, as I said to the traffic officer, not commercially active. I didn't have to get into what I'm getting into now with you, but that's why that's important to just make a mental note of as well, not to employee in the traditional sense of working for a company. Um, our person, our crown owned, state owned, uh, crown copyrighted name can be viewed as a franchise then of the bigger company, which is the crown state, nation state, the crown of London um, run for, you know, the main office. And then your uh, certified persons could be looked at as subsidiary companies. A uh, way to explain that would be the persons are employees of the government and they are like um, when any fast food restaurant chain wants to make um, franchises and you can buy um, a shop restaurant and have that company's name, you know, and use it and trade as that company. But you're not that company. You've bought into it to operate as it, you see. So uh, I hope that made some kind of common sense for your possession. I've got um, what a, a bit about possession and property and goods and um, em, employment, the act or, of employing or using, you know, and references from dictionaries there. I'm going to skip that because that's that's a lot. Engage, broken down there. Uh, you know, we are aware of the instruments of person and personage, a.k.a. legal personality for UK and English agreements within churches and courts. I hope you are by now and from this video presentation and show and when you can finally get this document, you will be. So man as a certified public legal person and a legal natural person, not so natural as one might think. Then, you know, we can look at inequity and trust positions of, you know, an equity acts in personam, the set law, you know, natural person with his or her to, I've got an error there, with his or her two legal persons under, you know, Human Rights International Code, Unidroit, Lieber Code, plus relevant international political and religious accords, covenants and treaties to include you are free to select how to perform. One must not be told how to perform. Performance is required to settle the controversy. You know, performances are played by actors with titles. You know, actors have troops. You know, military has troops. Remember, the world is a stage. Armies are judged upon their performance. Reality is but an illusion within this divine comedy of life. Man moves consciously from public legal trustee and adjusts the following to move back to the tree as a branch and ending all civil activities, save an individual trust with the creator. Your status is coming from private. Your standing will be dependent on what jurisdiction and capacity or jurisdiction you're in. So set law, grant or somewhat a creditor, agent, principal, or even just natural, authentic woman, woman, flesh and blood. Your capacity you know, is um, going from legal to law and the higher law, universal cosmic law. So there's a progression uh, of the journey and your capacity as a man 
means that you can't be equally charged. You know, the capacity from legal to lawful is your process. You are unable to be legally charged, so to speak, speak, because man does not have the legal capacity to be charged. Only persons do. Let us look at the travelling communities that do not register an offspring. How do the agents of the Crown and the police enforcers deal with these travelling communities? They often are unable to recognise these communities. Now, why is that? Can you see? Can you think for a moment? They haven't got birth certificates and registration. They haven't bowed down and obeyed and complied and are in a private capacity. They're not recognised like the Crown and the officers and the state and the lords and the Queen and all of this. Papacy, Papas Browns of London and crowns on Elizabeth's head, all of the estate conglomerate cannot see legally these, they're, they, they are outlaws, to be fair. When I say outlaws, I mean they're outside of the common laws of them. They reside on the land mass England and Wales in a private capacity as flesh and blood beings, and they don't have interest. And, uh, um, you know, for that in communities, are um, somewhat, you um, know, in, in across the pond, the Mormons, things like this, you know, um, certain faiths, certain communities rather well, and uh, I will rest my case there. So you need to look at the implementation of the instrumentation. This is key to elevate into equity and pride, not, not necessarily the highest, but privacy and trusts are the key out of this to some extent, but not they're not the final stop as a christian conscientious objector in the past you know just a conscientious objector to the war we're unable you know under our belief our faith to claim the father's name in vain you know give me your name you know the father's name is the surname you don't take the father's more codified dealings within these uh, passages of um, chapter and verse that to interpret in any way way you want but when you know the london inner city templars law societies based and referenced on with biblical precepts why wouldn't we you know you'd be a fool as i said about aristotle at the beginning of this you know you fool to ignore it so um, you don't claim the name in vain and you do not volunteer to be a person governed under westminster statutory codes that are mandated by upon the persons aka sinners debtors and trustees you know, grantor of dominion, no respecter of, of person. God equals man. Ergo, man is no respecter of persons. Have I not said that ye are all not not in? I'll put Psalms there, but I believe it will be the 82nd Psalm or somewhere in Psalms. I've referenced that in previous videos and chats with you. Have Jesus, how have I, I have said this, but it's written in Psalms and Jesus telling the masses, have I not said ye are all God? So we're all equal. Equality is paramount. All equal made in the image of the creator. It's, you know, it's just, I can't put it any simpler without trying to be called pagan or, um, you know, uh, an idiot or a sovereign citizen, free man. This is this video, this presentation. It's taken a lot of constructing. We're on page 35, 91. It's 10 o'clock. I started at half eight, half nine. So two and a half hours in. This may have to be in two parts. We will see. So trusts legal within the United Kingdom. We found misconstrued relationships within them. Not all trusts have misconstrued relationships, but generally trusts misconstrued relationships, unconscionable actions, statutory, implied, constructed, resulting trusts, indent trusts. It's referenced in the Bible about um, Moses leading the indentured slaves out of Egypt. Okay, so unconscionable actions, unconscionably done. And we find um, implied statutory construct resulting indentured trusts these legal trusts here they're unconscionably done and they found to have misconstrations in them with them us in them um i've got references to uh, trustee act 2000 legal persons and leg legislative ecclesia uh, 
um, bola papils of the papal crown, Catholic Roman doctrine, canons, universe, uniform code, uniform commercial code, admiralty and maritime. For a private tr express trust to be valid, we look at the three certainties that must be met. You know, the three certainties, the certainty of uh, intention, certainty of objects, and the certainty of subject matter, and you are free to research night versus night. Okay, so um, all trusts need to be registered, David. Well, okay, secret trusts and private express trusts don't. And for a private express trust to be valid, that's done verbally, expressed verbally, the three certainties must be met. And for you to go and find a case in point reference in English law, English common law, you will search night versus night. So to express a trust without a court judge paperwork or even mentioning the uh, the word trust, without registering it, you need to satisfy the three certainties. And you can find that in case in point reference night versus night. So not all trusts need to be registered. And the government made things and put things on its website, but such law, precedents, case law, maxims, and uh, landmark cases say otherwise. It depends what's been on what jurisdiction and what type of trust you've got to whether or not it needs to be registered, what type of trust you're expressing. All right. Remember the original naked trust first in the, the, uh, in the book of Genesis. Okay, uh, the first book of Moses written in all right naked Adam and Eve tree good and evil coming back fig leaf placed there broken the trust one who seeks equity must do equity you know equity will not aid a volunteer do not uh, volunteer any information or forms to the beast uh, god of all things goat mon eye transgressions moon eye um, you can forms and certain things if you deem it to you, but um, I'll expand on equity does not aid a volunteer from extensive publications that I can get to you, but now is not the time. You can look at becoming an ambassador or diplomat um, without paying £35 to get certain uh, documents and uh, registered with companies. You can do as you please, but you can look at witnesses for Christ Jesus. You know, you can look at trying to be stum, like other religions and faith that are recognised into legal, financial and UK courts. I am of this realm, uh, plain, if I play no part in it, of it. How can we be a name? You know, we are a party, a tripart, I, I. E Y E A Y E consciousness soul endowed with the spirit of the creator and with the Holy Ghost. I lay down the beliefs and enter unto facts. Chowter prima facie. So the UK or GB is a corporation and not a country. Remember, your person is your company. You're doing business as them. You are not them unless you deem it a benefit to go and claim the title. That's why the legal crown agent officers and courts address me, for instance, as sir. Sir is an entitlement and I never choose to sir. I say, please don't call me sir. Don't address me as sir. Just call me David. I am David. I am called David. I'm not a sir. I'm not a mister. I'm not a mister man. Men. What does sir entail? You know, riddle me this. Why sir? Kind of giving you the answer there, but that's what the text. Text the publication is written. Now understand, you know, why the legal profession tried to trick us into accepting these titles and names. You know, I remark we are not the defendant, David and DNA Jeremy. I am not a name. I am called David, son of Jeremy. How can I be a name? There is simply no need to go and register the legal name as an all caps business. Those that create it own it. Those that create the name own it name is not ours to use in that respect our first comment you know um let us continue you must be be careful of the company that you keep it is also a military term make sure that you have a healthy interest and mind your own business as well interest and business financial terms if we are living together as common man and wife then you may say he or she is my partner partner is a business term are you seeing the 
nature of our debased English language now, how corrupt, misleading English. Hence why it is of the utmost importance to word carefully and to specify for the purposes of clarity, audiences of doubt, the language one is commanding, oops, commanding, officer, officer commanding, more than the implied meanings and language definition Oxford editions dictionary you know it is enough it all stems from the Phoenicians the phonetic text scripts and the Hebraic text of Jew Phoenicians you know deaf Phoenicians hence why a judge robe banker may raise their voice and shut you they are under the impression that one cannot hear them the defendant Defendant, 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 D E F, def, defendant, you know, Moss, def, my defendants, defendant. So, Langu age translates into monster of all ages. In the end times, man will be confused and the days will grow shorter and darker. Darkness shall befall mankind and realm. You know, uh, it is written is this, not just in the Bible and in um, Revelations and within the Vatican and depicted within um, architecture. Um, where have we heard this before? You know, what does the Bible's end time prophecy remind me of? Have you heard of an Egyptian demon also known as Apep, Apophis, an evil snake demon who tries to eat? It takes some swallowing he is a great surfer who attempts to swallow light for a light snack thriving on chaos and confusion he lives in the darkness of the underworld and lies in wait for ra the sun god to appear each evening Bulb. stay frosty so are we still at war trade and commerce united kingdom corporation so on the 22nd of December, October 1914, Mr. Craven Ellis asked the president of the Board of Trade whether the formation by the government of the United Kingdom Corporation is only a wartime measure, and he will give assurance that the corporation will be wound up immediately after hostilities cease. 